Hey everyone, you're watching Hub on Flash Videos. I'm Arabda, and today we are talking to Michael. Michael is the co-founder and CTO of Make. He's also the co-founder of Casper. So Michael, so glad to have you chatting with us on this episode. Maybe you could start by introducing yourself a little bit and telling us about your story. Sure. Well, first of all, thank you very much for having me. I'm very happy to be here. So yeah, I've been a tech executive for over 25 years, mostly in CTO sort of style uh, roles. Started out in mobile interactive applications in the mid nineties in, in Europe which at the time, mobile interactive apps meant text messaging, right? Sent uh, ABC to one, two, three and, and get your horoscope yeah. or, or find some information or, or those kinds of applications. And stayed in mobile for basically for, for the evolution of that industry. I went from text-based applications to ringtones and wallpapers and videos. And then in the early 2000s, devices became powerful enough, which if you compare them to today, is still a joke, but they had like tiny color screens now and they could make sound, et cetera, et cetera. So it was possible to think about possibly putting apps and games on devices. And I joined THQ, which was one of the top three video game publishers globally at the time as their CTO for mobile. And our team put the first downloadable mobile games on, on a cell phone back in 2001, which really kicked off the, sort of the, the game and, and app economy. I stayed in the mobile gaming uh, industry for about 15 years. Uh, fast forward to 2017, we, we sold our, our last sort of gaming venture and, and started Make and briefly thereafter Casper. Okay, so that's like a lot of technology, a lot of evolutions and changes. I would love to zoom in a bit more on the origin story with Casper and Make and what prompted you to start these. Sure. So I'll just give you a quick, quick background there. So Make is a really a small privately held firm. After we sold that gaming company, we were in a privileged position of, of being free to choose what we work on and business with. So my partner, Alex, and I decided to exclusively focus on high impact industries such as health tech and blockchain technology, things that could truly really have a global impact. And that led us to also co-found Casper Labs, the company that created the Casper network. And Make is one of the primary technology providers for the Casper network with our CSPR suite of products, which comprises essentially all essential components to make a blockchain ecosystem succeed. Awesome. Do you want to expand a little bit more on Make's uh, philosophy to invest in high impact industries? Sure. So I think the high impact of blockchain industry is probably already clear to your audience. So I'll, I'll focus on one of our other areas, public health technology. We are the technology partner for the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation, or IHME, which is housed at the University of Washington, but is privately funded by the Bill Gates Foundation. They are the world's largest private public health data player with uh, over 5,000 data scientists in over 150 countries around the world collecting all kinds of public health metrics on a national and local scale. And all this data then gets shipped off to Seattle, Washington, where it gets normalized so that you can compare apples to apples. And we help IHME turn these huge data sets, and we're literally talking about ter terabytes of public health data, into products that they can provide to governments and multinationals to help them make data-informed public health decisions and policy. So these data products are used by hundreds of governments around the world, as well as 80% of the top pharmaceutical companies in the world. So, so they literally help people live longer and healthier lives. And obviously we consider that high impact. Yeah, that's like the definition of high impact as a use case that you went after. Right. So tell us a bit more about CSPR product suite and what was the, you know, like the pain point that you were trying to solve with that? Very simply, the adoption of blockchain technology. Um, there are a few hundred uh, million users around the world who have ever knowingly interacted with blockchain. And we want to help the remaining 8 billion people come on board. Uh, for all intents and purposes, blockchain is still very niche and very hard to understand for new users. We are basically all passing the same crypto native early adopters around from project to project. And we believe that for blockchain to become more accessible to the rest of the world, it has to tackle a few challenges. And user friendliness is being first and foremost. Nobody who's not technical or over a certain age is going to deal with 24 recovery words, hardware wallets, and all, all the other things that we make people jump through. Uh, most people's password is password, right? And several billions of Bitcoin have been lost to misplaced private keys. So when we can make blockchain as easy to use as Facebook or as an iPhone, then I think we can start thinking about breaking out of the crypto sandbox. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Um, I mean, user friendliness and ease of use are vastly important when it comes to adoption. All right. So there's a lot that you have created and there's a lot that has evolved over time. If you could travel back in time itself and fix something or change something about the CSPR product suite, would you change anything? 
listen, if I could travel back in time, I would travel back even further back in time and start the development of the CSPR suite even earlier. It's, it's 2024 and the fact that blockchain is still this hard to use for the average user is just too yeah, bad. Fair enough. All right. So if we are having a conversation with Macon Halborn here, let's talk security. What was your general approach to the Clasper wallet and how did you go about it? So we try and learn from best practices. We try and learn from mistakes that other projects made. So we obviously keep our ears open to any, any sort of reports uh, out there. Strong believers in test-driven development. And also working with a strong auditing partner, such as Halborn, who were involved in the process early on in the development, not just as a final checkbox at the end. Uh, you were truly a development partner from the beginning. And we are very thankful for that. Only going ahead and cybersecurity is such an important, essential thing to partner on. Why go with Halborn? So it's, a, it's obvious to, to most people that developers cannot really test their own software, right? And, and the patterns that they use and the decisions that they make are really based on their own frame of reference and the expected use of the application, the, the happy path. And that's how an attacker might approach it. So it, there really is no alternative but to work with an external auditor who specializes in finding security issues and has broad visibility on related issues in the wider industry. Uh, Halborn has a tremendous reputation and track record, and we had heard from other projects uh, that we are close with about the great experience they had had with Halborn. So after learning more about Halborn's approach to auditing, it was really a, a done deal. Okay, that's absolutely great to hear. And is there any alpha you'd like to share with us for the upcoming year? Um, so for Casper Network specifically, there are a few launches happening this month. There's a AAA game called Beast League that's coming out, I think, even this week. Uh, we helped them integrate with uh, Casper Network, uh, and we have very high expectations for it because the game is really, truly awesome. Another thing we're excited about is later this uh, quarter, we will bring .CSPR domain names, uh, so Web3 names, to the Casper ecosystem. All right, Michael, this has been a super fun chat for me. I learned a lot about projects that you're on. I'm looking forward to more updates from Casper and Make and everything around it. Thank you so much for joining us today and taking the time to share your story and your projects. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me.